Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's October 26, 2024. Let's talk about Jack Catterall's victory over Regis Progray, <clears throat> but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in my favorites folder are highlights from the fight. Folks, this is a gem video. We talk about complicated fighters. We talk about talent, how when you see it, you can't lose sight of it. Now, Jack Catterall is a defensively blessed fighter, right? He's defensively blessed. He's very hard to hit flush in the head. He's able to hide while he's pretty much right in front of you. So what I want people to do is to look at the video I have in my favorites folder, understand a signature of Jack Catterall's is that he doesn't have to put his hands up for defense. Rather, like Mayweather, that's the analogy, like Mayweather, he's wearing body armor. In other words, he intuitively knows how to get his shoulder between you and him and how to move his head so that you have to come across his body to hurt him. Now, in this fight, it really stands out because he's fighting another southpaw. In fact, Regis Progre is actually a puncher. Look at the knockout percentage. He's fighting a knockout artist who's a southpaw. So his angles are going to be different. He's not fighting a righty. As I've said here a million times, lefties are more comfortable against righties than they are lefties. Right? So here, you would expect Catterall to be uncomfortable. You would expect Catterall, who again, keeps his hands low. Look at his hands. He actually, by the way, uses his right hand to protect his body. Right here is Catterall in against a southpaw slugger. And the blessed defense is still there. Right, folks? You know, I'm telling you, it's hard to hold up your hands for 12 rounds. You see these fighters with rabbit ears. They're holding up their hands. They're, they're trying to make sure that there is a forearm there to block punches on the way in. Here you're dealing with a guy who doesn't have to have his hands up, who has a shoulder in the way, who has his head tucked, who's moving his head. And, of course, he's doing all of this at times on his back foot. And, folks, he's flawless. Right? You just see the defense. If I knew nothing about Catterall, and I just started watching Catterall, and I saw some guy out there against sluggers with his hands down, and he's just moving his head, and he's just twisting his body I would ask myself, how long is this going to last? Right, folks? Today it lasted for 12 rounds. It's Catterall who gets two knockdowns. Pro grade, his credit, gets one. But it's Catterall who gets two knockdowns. Right? The defense is blinding. You see the defense and you realize this is a complicated fighter. Let's go one step further. He's fighting Progre. Progre has a lot to think about, doesn't he? Because Catterall combines the spectacular defense with his hands down, the use of body armor, with a here trigger straight left hand. Folks, Catterall's a southpaw. 
When I say his left hand, I'm not talking about his jab hand. I'm not saying his jabs here trigger. I'm saying his dominant hand, the one in the back, is here trigger. Right? First round. What I want people to do is to look at the end of the first round. You're going to see Catterall just, it looks like he just leans forward for a moment. Then you realize he's thrown a here trigger straight left. It catches Pro Gray, right? Pro Gray, being a professional prize fighter, of course, tries to look cool, calm, and collected. You can imagine in the ring, in the moment, Pro Gray was thinking, what the blank? Right? Understand, the reason guys can't just charge in on Catterall is Catterall seems to be able to get off this lightning quick, straight left on demand, however he's moving, right? So let me just say too, that left is interesting because Catterall can lead with it. This is a Zhili Zhang situation. He doesn't have to touch you with his jab to throw his power hand. He can actually lead with it. So you're coming inside and Catterall doesn't have a tell. So it's not like you're coming inside, he touches you with a jab and you say, uh-oh, that left might be coming. Let me roll away. Let me start rolling away now. No, you don't get the warning. Right? You don't get the thunder before the rain. Right, you're coming in, you can imagine a lot of opponents of Catterall. Enter the ring, they see Catterall with his hands down. Looks like his right hand's just dangling, doesn't it? They see Catterall with that right shoulder lead, he's a southpaw, his right hand's down here someplace. And they're thinking, oh, come on, I can bum rush this guy. I can rough this guy up. How's this guy going to prevent me from throwing looping shots? I'm a knockout puncher. This guy must not have read my resume. He must not know how many guys I stopped. Then, of course, you start to come forward and boom, you're hit with some vicious shots. You realize that even though the guy's hands are down, it's an illusion. You can't hit him. Right? He's moving his upper body. He stands where he has a lean. Right? Sometimes he's leaning forward. Sometimes he's leaning backward. He's in front of you, but yet he's very hard to find in the ring. So I encourage everyone here. Just look at Catterall. Just look at his defense. Look at that beautiful left hand he throws at the end of round one. Look at the two knockdowns he gets of Regis later in the fight. I believe it's round nine or so. Right? Look at how Regis is trying to come after him. Right? Regis is not a wallflower. Regis is actually trying to pursue Jack Catterall. And look at how futile it is. Because Catterall's backing away, and like great fighters with back feet, educated back feet, we'll call it. Catterall knows where the ropes are. Catterall knows how to back away without backing into the ropes. Right? Catterall is actually moving in a bit of a circle. And, of course, while he's moving, he's still dangerous. Right? Because he's always a hair trigger. Straight left away from having you in trouble. Catterall also has a right hand, right? But his best punch is that left, and he can lead with it. He can hide it behind a one-two. He can throw it as a chopping punch, right? So just understand, Catterall is a major threat to everyone at 140 pounds. That includes Devin Haney. That includes Teofimo Lopez. That includes everyone else. Right, this is the guy 
who because he's defensively blessed and because he's an optical illusion, right? He's going to frustrate an opponent and he's going to dampen an opponent's output, right? His opponent is going to throw less punches than they normally do and they're going to land less punches than they normally do. Right? Catterall is the guy who knows that as the fight goes further along, he's going to progressively do better. He starts with defense, then he slowly starts adding offense as the fight goes forward. I did a pre-fight video for members only. I encourage them to put money on the plus 250 program as an underdog hedged with the over in the fight. If you did that, folks, you benefited greatly because you had the leverage on the pro gray side to load up on the over, right? Catterall has gotten guys in trouble in the middle rounds of fights. Think Jorge Linares, for example. That's an excellent fight. But I noticed that Catterall is the guy who knows he's the superior boxer. So he's not going to overextend himself, right? Even here, he drops Pro Gray twice and doesn't go for the stoppage. His operating assumption is, okay, now I'm certain that I'm ahead on the scorecards. Let me coast and win the decision. Look at the scorecards, by the way, here. You're reading about how this was a spirited fight, but yet when you look at the scorecards, it's a wide fight, isn't it, on the scorecards? This is not Usyk over Fury. This isn't the set of scorecards where you're looking at that last scorecard to make sure you have the winner right. No, Catterall pulls away in the fight, folks. That's who he is. Don't let his low hands fool you. Let me say this too. One of my favorite athletes in history, different sport, is Michael Jordan. And Jordan, who of course averaged 30 per game career. <laughs> Just understand, this is one of the dominant scorers of our time. Right? But Jordan had a line. Jordan said, offense comes and goes. He said, you should be able to play good defense every night. Right? Understand, folks, when you're dealing with Jack Catterall, you're dealing with great defense every match. That's going to be overwhelming for most opponents. It overwhelmed an active Regis Progre today. I encourage people to look up Progre's quotes following the fight. Right? Progre, as he put it, has fought everyone. He went on to add that Jack Catterall is one of the very best he has ever fought. Keep that in mind. Understand, too. 140 has ringers. Right? Richardson Hitchens has a long reach, is a taller guy. You wonder how Catterall would be able to deal with the fact that Hitchens might be able to hit him from positions that many opponents have not. Right? Understand the guy Hitchens is fighting, Paro, fancies himself as the prodigy. Right? He may have stopped Matthias had he not been completely exhausted at the end of the fight. When I talk about 140, I'm talking about an extremely deep division. Just understand, in that extremely deep division, Jack Catterall has a real chance to be the very best. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by. And for premium members, the pre-fight video was done, I believe, August 20th or so. Double check me on dates, but it's a video from August. Thanks for stopping by.